this video we're going to talk about installing Lutron Caseta switches uh, throughout a house and also perhaps uh, replacing some receptacles and other random electrical components throughout the house as well. So we got a bunch of stuff on the table here. And there's two things that I recommend you have that are missing. One being a small torpedo level that an electrician might use and then also a small like machine square so that you can get your uh, receptacles kind of flat and uh, square with uh, any trim that might be in the house. Um, if you're having trouble getting your uh, switches to lay flat because they're and they're too recessed, you can use these uh, Legos from Gardner Bender. You can fold them and build it out. You just slip that over the uh, screw. You can just tear off whatever height you need. So that's handy. Um, if you're using the uh, screwless wall plates, you won't have a trouble with the screws being too long that go into the uh, out the back. But when you use these uh, plates here, and if you find that you're if you're using screw wall plates and uh, your screws are too long, you can thread them in to your uh, wire stripper and cut them off. They won't have any kicking around. But that's what these two holes are for, and they're pretty much found on all wire strippers. So you'll need uh, wire strippers, but the, uh, the cutting part is in here in the jaw. So you also need to get a pair of side cutters for uh, snipping any wires if you want to snip anything inside of a box where you have uh, limited access. Um, we got some screwdrivers, so we got Robertson, Flathead, Phillips. I don't know why Americans keep using Flathead. I don't... I swear they must have been invented like a million years ago by some Neanderthal and they continue to exist. I don't know if you forgot to make a patent and people are ripping them off or what. But like Robertson is great. You can use Phillips. Japan has made their own version of Phillips just to screw you up if you're working on a motorcycle. Anyway, there's some options there. Um, I use Wago connectors. You can use Marettes or wire nuts, whatever you want to call them. The uh, kit comes with these things but you can only use them if, based on the number of wires that you're trying to stick in there whereas the uh, the Wagos you can get four-way connector you can get six-way eight-way that's an eight-way connector there just a uh, two-way you can get lever connectors so if you have like a fine wires like on a light fixture is common you need to use the uh, lever style to uh, clamp onto them. These, uh, this style will push in and be secure in this uh, style of Wago. They make them for 15 amp circuits and 30 amp circuits. So I got a, a variety of all. I decided to use Leviton screwless uh, wall plates instead of the uh, Lutron. The Lutron ones have a reveal line and every uh, switch comes with one of these, so I have an abundance of them. But for whatever reason, I decided to go with the uh, this style as well. And these are uh, so amazing for putting the uh, ball plates on and having it look good. So I'll show you that later on. Um, I don't know about in the U.S., but in Canada, we used to run to our light switches just a single, like a, a two-wire down to the light switch, and you'd run your hot on the white and then the black would come out as uh, your <clears throat> as your uh, light fixture but we can't do that anymore and uh, when you're using the uh, dimmers from Lutron they don't have a, a neutral so that's okay but if you want to use their on off product it depends on a neutral so you need to run a three wire in order to uh, get that to work so if you look here, I've installed three different types. I've got their dimmer. They make a pro dimmer, which is capable of more current. They have an on-off switch. So the uh, dimmer is just a no neutral, so it's really easy to connect. The three wire, wire, three wire wiring is super easy as well. This thing has got like five wires on it, and it requires a neutral. So I would avoid these unless you want an on-off. 
which you might use that in a room that has non-dimming lights that you're not prepared to replace the lights or the fixtures. Or a case like if you have an exterior light with a motion sensor, you might just want it on and then if someone walks by it, it the motion sensor turns it on on the outside. So I've got that style. And then uh, I've got a fan controller here, which is, uh, I don't remember if it had neutral or not, but uh, it wasn't a problem. So in some boxes you will find a neutral, which was handy, but in one case I had to run a wire. So that's kind of annoying. Um, you might want to have a circuit tester if you're doing receptacles. I found in my house there was one receptacle that was wired wrong and I picked it up actually by looking at the screw terminals because like the white is supposed to go to the silver screw black is supposed to go to brass and they were flipped and I'm like well that's kind of funny and then I'm like well I wonder if they flipped it on the other end too and corrected themselves so you need to use one of those to see if they double screwed it up and fixed their, their mistake and in my case it was only wrong on one end uh, then, so I, what I've been doing is, I, some locations I'll make a pigtail. So instead of connecting both whites and blacks to the receptacle, I'll run a, a pigtail if there's space in the box. And then uh, the ground. Uh, the grounds weren't done very well in the house, I'll just say that. So I've been correcting them. And in a lot of cases, the grounds were like only an inch long off the screw. And there was nowhere to get another wire under the screw. So you could just stab that on and do a pigtail to extend the ground. Because the Lutron light switches, sorry I'm going back and forth in the way of the light, uh, do require to have a ground on them. This is a, a non-Caseta product, but this is just a, uh, a motion sensing on off switch. They also make a motion sensing dimmer switch, which we'll see in the house. So in some cases, if it's just a single fixture in a small room like a bathroom, you probably don't want to use the Caseta brand unless uh, I chose not to anyway. Maybe you would choose to. Um, yeah, you got a knife, some connectors, and uh, the cordless screw is kind of nice, scru screwdriver, because you're going to be doing lots of these stupid flathead screws when you're taking it apart. And it's going to be mind bending. Little light, kind of handy. A HEPA vacuum, the drywall dust could have asbestos in it, and you shouldn't breathe dust no matter what kind of dust it is. So let's use a vacuum and suck it up. I don't like this one. It's really loud, like it should be illegal. Uh, do you think that there would be some kind of consumer protection on the noise a vacuum could make? But uh, I've got it, so I just have to use hearing protection when I use it. For lights, you have to pick what kind of lights you want. Don't buy GE, they're garbage. They say they're dimmable, but they're also really loud when you dim them. The uh, Philips are perfect. You can get them in whatever uh, color you want and volt and wattage you want. And then I got some big guys here. So these are non-dimmable. So you'd have the on off switch for these. So in this like uh, furnace room, I've got a number of them in here. So I think that is about it for supplies I wanted to talk about. So let's just scurry around the house and uh, see what we got going on. So we've been living here for about a, a month and a half now. So this room here just has the on off switch. So it's an abrupt on off because uh, these are non-dimming lights. I chose that in this area, it wouldn't be necessary to dim. Maybe somebody would want that, but not myself. So uh, there is a uh, bridge that you need to buy if you want to control your lights from a smart smartphone. So you can buy, this is a regular bridge you can get from the hardware store. They have a pro model, which I would recommend. So the pro model is uh, capable of integrating into a lot more different software systems whereas this one I don't know it's just not as good so if you're going to be doing a like a smart house then you would go get the pro model of this you pay not a lot more for it and uh, this also keeps uh, 
it's like a timer in memory for your system so you don't need your phone to be on for it to work and what you've got is uh, you can set lights to turn on and off at certain times or you can uh, that's probably the main reason you would use this and then if you wanted to make a, a remote that it connects to a whole bunch of them I don't think this is involved in it. In fact, I know it's not because uh, I was doing that before I connected this. So I guess the main reason you have this is just so that you can name all your devices and save your configuration on here. And then it'll allow you to control it from away from your house. So it'll send signals from your smartphone, I guess, like if you were in another town or whatever, you want to control your lights. And then uh, I have a 3KVA UPS here. So this thing, if it can focus, is capable of running my network for about 24 hours with the power out. So this uh, would be an alternative to having a generator. If you had a security system, you might want to go this route or whatever. It's your choice. When Where I live, we have uh, the internet is 1.5 gig, so you need 10 gig equipment. So it's kind of expensive. So that's a, a 10 gig router there going into a 10 gig well, this is a router switch kind of thing. It's uh, it's both. And anyway, so you've got a few things, and then the UPS runs on a 30 amp circuit. So there's that. I guess we'll look at <clears throat> some of the other things around the house. So that's like the original light switch. Then we have these like country western shutter things that are normally here, and it was hard to reach because like, you come in the room and the switch is behind the shutter. So I'm like, what the hell? So I put a, a wireless switch over here. They're really easy to pair, and I recommend you pair them before you put them into the uh, software and the app, which we'll look at some point if I remember to. So uh, this switch does the same thing as the other switch, but it's just uh, attached to the drywall. So you... Uh, the first thing you do is you attach this to the clear plastic piece and uh, attach it to the wall plate. Then you put the drywall screws into the uh, the drywall to attach it. So that's why you would need to use a, uh, a torpedo level to get that set. I guess we should go back and take a look at that remote part. So when you're uh, mounting the remote into the clear plastic adapter you have to remove this piece which is uh, that part if you're going to go flat against the drywall with no box if there's a box you just leave that part in and you're good to go so there is that and there's some pedestals you can buy as well another thing to mention is that these Lutron switches are ginormous like they're like the really old GFI receptacles they take up a huge amount of box space so you need to be really careful with how much extra wire you're introducing and for the most part they all come with extra wires so it's a bit of a, a game to cram them in there so yeah that's just a, a gripe that I have I would have thought that they could make them a bit smaller and though another thing I noticed was that with the um, no neutral switches they have to have a load on them to work. I have one location in the house where I have a no neutral switch installed that controls some uh, receptacles, like the top half of the receptacle. And uh, I couldn't program this until I put a couple night lights in and turn the night lights on. Like you don't need to have the light on and like lit, but the switch needs to be on so that the uh, the current can bleed through there and turn on the uh, Lutron switch. So if you're having trouble in a switch a situation like that, you might be that you don't have any lights in any of your sockets or something. So uh, you would just need to put in some lights so that you can program it. Because like, if you're in a house that's just being remodeled or something, it, it won't work without lights. Uh, there's something else I just thought of I wanted to mention. It'll probably come back to me at some point. But uh, you never know. So, right here. So, this uh, 
being an on off switch, it did not have a neutral, it just had a two wire conductor coming down to it. But it was easy enough for me to stick in a three wire conductor, I still need to put staples on it, over to this box, because the box is what had the power in it and not the uh, light switch, if that makes any sense. But this junction box had like nine different circuits going into it and it was just way overcrowded so I put a box extension on it so that I could uh, work with it. And I took out a, there was a really gigantic moret in there that was still not rated for the number of wires under it. So I took that out and put some wagos in there and took care of things. So that's uh, a bit of extra work if you want the on off ability. This house, uh, they didn't respect the uh, concept of having uh, on off switches in like every location where you're going in or out of a room or in this case like you got adjacent rooms so you might want to have light control in the adjacent room so what I did was uh, this is the switch for the the room we're in like this is kind of called the laundry room it's what it was initially now it's like a kitchenette kind of thing and then uh, the room next door is like a an illegal bedroom at the, this point in time until you get uh, get it up to code. So that is a uh, remote switch. I can rip this off or not. Excuse me, right hand. So this one here, you have to remove that little black or the clear white piece off, slide that into the and then uh, attach it to the wall plate and then put in the other switch into the uh, box. And then I found that it was kind of floppy so I put these uh, black drywall screws into the wood just so that I could have two switches where only one was currently. These have little coin cell batteries in them. They're supposed to last like 10 years and uh, hopefully they do. I had one that arrived with a dead battery. It was easy enough to change the battery, so I just did that rather than replace it. Um, it's far cheaper than running a, a three-way circuit, right? Like if I wanted to have this controlling that light over there, over here for this room, you'd have to run, the, I don't know, 30 feet of wire to do that. So it, it's cheaper just to buy the uh, Casadas if you want to add a three-way switch. And you don't need to have that hub or bridge or whatever it is to do that. They work out of the box without that, so that's uh, not a concern. And then in this room, or in the basement, there's essentially three rooms that are all kind of tied together. So what I did was, you can link multiple circuits together. So that pedestal, which you can carry it around and put it wherever you want, can control the uh, as many lights as you want. You could program one to do your whole house. You can get single, double, and triple gang pedestals for that. This uh, is like the rec room slash stair lighting. And it, it had a three-way switch to begin with. And you can tell where the real power is because it's got like the indication LEDs. And you can program the dim wherever you want it to be when it comes on. I just have them on maximum for the most part. The dimming function is not a big deal for me, but my wife seems to enjoy them. And then there's the other three-way switch at the top of the stairs. But you may not want to come downstairs and then turn off the light and then walk to the other room. So I just uh, added another three-way switch over here does the same thing for this room without turning off the bedroom or the adjacent room. So again, we've got a bunch of like non-dimming fluorescent lights down here. So I decided to install the on-offs and I didn't get the pro model because they're pretty expensive. It was cheaper just to run a three conductor cable rather than buying a pro model. In my case, it depends. It could be different for you. Um, where are we going to go from here? Right, so they do make uh, a dimmable 
fluorescent LED fixture replacement. So uh, you'll see these in uh, upstairs in a couple of different locations. So you can buy these from uh, Commercial Electric and they're dimmable. They have, these are the more expensive brand version of the dimmable. They make another version that says 0 to 10 volts, but you don't want those. Those are for like uh, commercial settings with occupancy sensors and uh, this, you don't want that. So just go with these. If you have smart lights, I don't know how that would work. I wouldn't recommend mixing Lutron and smart lights together unless you use the on-off version because then like uh, just like outside when you've got a light with a, a motion sensor right it's you leave it on always but the lights off so you could go that route if you wanted to but that'd be kind of weird you always get lots of these remotes so you don't really need to buy any if you want to add freeway switches around your house because like you, you buy them in a pair to begin with so some places will have three-way switches already and you'll use them and some places won't so you just you can add them if you would desire to or if you want to have the uh, little pedestals they come with lots of things here I only uh, use the screws to be honest and then like I said you can shorten these screws if you need to with your uh, wire stripper you just put it in there and snip it off because sometimes you'll need them really short We'll talk about the, the pitfall of the uh, screw face plates upstairs. The electrical panel here, you could go and buy like a Leviton smart panel, but you're going to be turning your entire circuit on and off. And now with the advent of arc fault circuit breakers, like they're pretty expensive. So you have as many circuits on it as you can per breaker or most more fixtures as possible per breaker so it, it doesn't really make any sense to go that route then square D has a, a new panel coming out it's only available in California right now it's a pretty neat panel but it's pretty big so it has like a meter base in it it has a DC battery connection on it so if you want to run your house on solar with uh, batteries because in California there's a mandate now that you have to have some solar in every new build so they just this panel is perfect for them you want to go through and do your panel schedule so that you know like what the heck it is you're turning on and off so i just i write down like the description the amps the wire size and then the uh, breaker number when i got the house it was uh poorly labeled and then they're putting in these like skinny breakers and not there's nowhere to write it down so I just made my own panel schedule in the future there's a this is a waterfront property and there's a, a number of conductors go out to a tree where there used to be a boat lift and a, a light so I'm gonna use the Lutron to turn a light on and off from the house rather than having to walk 200 feet to turn the light off at the lake so I think that's kind of neat they do make a um, an extension cord model that's good for 15 amps. I might put that down here because I don't think 5 amps is, might be enough if I want to put some like a receptacle down at the waterfront for some reason. So that's the other thing I had wanted to mention about their product line is there's uh, a few things I don't have. They have some pro products so you can look around and, and figure that out as to what's available. The app looks different on a phone versus a tablet for whatever reason. So this is, is the uh, app on a, a tablet. So my intent would be to have this tablet somewhere where it's available so that you can uh, control the house. And uh, unfortunately this tablet doesn't have a good battery in it, so I need to get a new battery. It'll tell you how many lights are on in the house. You can like turn them all on or turn them all off, depending how you set it up. You organize them by room, so you can kind of tell what I've got going on. And then if it's like a solid color, that means it's on.
So the Picos are like the wireless remotes. You can go to scenes. So I have uh, the ability to turn all my lights on or off. I've made those scenes. You can make a, a number of scenes any way you want. Then for schedules, so I have my exterior lights, they come on at sunset and then I turn them off at uh, 11 p.m. each day. So it's kind of handy to have your lights on until you go to bed, I guess, essentially. That way if I give you order pizza or something, the guy can actually get your address and come up to your house and uh, be able to figure out where you are. Uh, so you could have it from sunset to sunrise if you wanted to, but uh, my wife didn't really like that. So I just changed it to 11 o'clock. Then I have my lights, I just turn my garage lights off at 11 p.m. every day, whether they're on or not. It doesn't really, it doesn't matter if they're on or not. That way, if I forget the lights on, that just turns them off. For uh, settings, I recommend you write down your password because it's not immediately, it's not available in the app. You have to have it written down somewhere. Otherwise, you got to reset it. I've got 40 devices in here right now. So you can have it set up so that it knows when you're arriving or leaving home, which I've not done. There's wait, various uh, options on how to do that, I think. Yeah, how do you, does it say you're at home? So you can have a phone knowing your location, basically. So there is that. Um, all right, but again, that app is optional as well as the bridge is optional. And then I got a bunch of fluorescent light fixtures I've taken out. So I've been going through and getting rid of them best I can. I'll run upstairs. So in this room here, when they did the oak paneling, they should have consulted an electrician so they could have moved that. So I gotta run that through my chop saw and adjust it so they can put it on the wall correctly. But in this room, they've got the light switches kind of far apart, which is kind of weird. So what you could do is, like these are both, this one is actually wireless. The real light switch is in another location. And then there, this one covers the uh, pot lights over there. So you could uh, put another one right here that controls both of them because the lights are in the same room, but like opposite locations, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I haven't changed all the light switches. This is just a simple like uh, exterior coach light kind of thing. And uh, at the very minimum, I got to put in a Decora rocker just to make it a little bit nicer. But I may not do the uh, Caseta on there because I've got motion sensing lights all around the house. So they're, they're controlled by a Caseta switch so that I can uh, bump them to turn them all on at the same time or just leave them on the motion sensing kind of thing. So then, oh, there's some kids out there trespassing bastards. Um, anyway, down at that tree, there's uh, a light uh, down there. So that's where I would be controlling it from the um, Lutron system in the future. Um, in this kitchen, so we've got a couple different lights. So we've got one light switch that's like really kind of awkwardly located in behind the coffee maker, which does the under cabinet lighting. So that's a great one that I'm going to be doing with the, uh, the wireless in the near future. So I can just put a wireless one right here then put another kitchen light switch up there. So when you come into the kitchen, you don't need to go like that way to turn them on, you can just turn them both on from here. Or you can even have another one that turns on this light, those two lights, and then like the breakfast area light, because the switch is way over there. So uh, I'm gonna be putting a bunch of uh, wireless switches right here, is what I'm trying to say. Because that's, that's the beauty of it, you don't need to run any wiring or nothing. You just do it. Uh, yes, so. Again, this one, like bring them on nice and uh, slow so they're not like shocking to your eyes. This is a location where I had a neutral available and I wanted uh, 
on off capability for my uh, outdoor motion sensors. Sorry, we just got cut off. Um, yeah, so this is the location where I wanted to have uh, an on off switch for my outdoor motion sensor. So like if I just bump it off and then on, it turned on my outdoor and then they'll, they'll come off in a few minutes and then just go to motion setting mode. And then I've got a, just a rocker for my coach light and also a wireless one back to this. And there was nothing here. There's, this is, there's no box behind this. It's just attached to the wall. And you can see when you use the screw face plates, it is painstaking to try to get the gap to look right. And the heights are all different. The reveal is wrong and they're, it's just no fun. Hate it. So if you use the uh, screwless, it's a lot easier. And then like when you're putting these in, as when you're just starting the screws, you kind of got to twist it whatever way so that it sits naturally flat. So I'm going to come back and put a three gang on here, but I just want to show you what the issue was. And uh, yeah, so there's not anything, but no box behind that. It's just very convenient to add them wherever you want. This house, the people that we bought it from the original owners, they've been here for 45 years or something like that. So anyway, there's not a lot of lights in the house, but there's copious light fixtures, which is kind of weird. But anyway, so in the, this is like the formal dining room. There's just like a, a chandelier and then some pot lights for where they used to have their cabinet for whatever. And then there was a, a there was a double gang switch or box there. And I just put in a, a single clock box there instead. Seemed like a an opportune place to put it because I had one in stock and I just wanted to use it. So they've got that there and you don't get shocked with the carpet when you touch the plastic which is kind of nice. Whereas these things they had nice like uh, switch plates and whatnot in the house but they're all metal and you always get shocked. So you put plastic and the decor kind of updates the place. So I've done a lot of that and then in this room the formal living room doesn't have any lights at all and you would naturally kind of come from that direction you might want to have a as you're coming around you might want to have a light switch for the dining room right by the thermostat so uh, that's my intent is I'm gonna just put the uh, remotes for that over here so I can do that this room like the foyer, I guess you call it. There's actually one, two, three lights on different switches and the switches are in different locations. It's kind of annoying. Like there's one switch for that guy up there. There's one for the sconces in the corner and then there's another one for the chandelier. So I just put in a wireless one where I can turn all three of them on and off at the same time. So there was, one was already on, so it stayed on, then the other two came on. Now I turn them off, they come off. How embarrassing. Why isn't that one doing that? I guess that one knows that it was on to begin with. Okay, I never noticed that feature. Or annoyance, depending how you want to call it. Off. So, now, what's going to happen? Huh. Well, I'm baffled. I did have them all hooked up, so I'll have to take a look at the programming and see what's going on, because I'm quite certain very recently <laughs> they were all working together. But I've not had any problems with uh, the software, so I think it's probably me. <laughs> what's going on with that, I'm not too sure. So then, uh, you can get from the pro packages you can get these with like higher amperage capacity you can get them like this with four switches that you can have them do whatever random thing you want and they also have uh, some kind of audio control which I have no idea how that works and uh, yeah so there's that ability there then we'll go into the I guess they call it powder room so in this room here 
it's not that big. So I decided that I wasn't going to spend the money on Caseta switches in here, but I did buy a Lutron. So I got the uh, occupancy dimmer. And then I also got the, uh, the fan. So you can set the countdown to whatever you want. And then as it's about to turn off, it kind of it runs the fan low and back up again. And then you know you've got like one minute before the fan turns off. So you can uh, turn it back on if you need to or whatever you want to do. And then you can just leave the room and it'll turn off automatically or you can turn it off as you leave. This is the garage. So there's no way of knowing if the light's on there. And it's cold, it's winter, it smells like gasoline in there. So I just have this one turns off automatically at 11.03 p.m. every day. And then there's just another one here for that sconce. So that light switches. Kind of expensive, but I wanted to do everything with some kind of new switch. Like at first to start off I wanted to do like all like the common areas that a guest might be able to get to and change those. And then I realized I kind of liked the product so I kept going. But I wanted to get the bathroom kind of updated as well. Going up here, I've got the GE dimmer or dimmable bulbs and they're like loud. If you'd be able to hear them or not. But when you're in the house, you can certainly hear them. All right, battery is getting low, so I gotta hurry up. We will pause to enjoy the unibrow art. So if you pluck your unibrow, you can make it pretty stylish. Oh yeah. In the uh, front of the house, it's viewable from the road. So I put them in here because you can make a like an away scheme for your house so that random lights turn on and off. When you're away, we might trick some people, but all your neighbors and random people walking up and down the road probably know what's going on. This room, I didn't want to really be in a hurry when I went to here. So in the bedroom, this is where we got the uh, fan controller. I don't really know what the middle button does. I think it's just for setting preference for where you start. And in this room, there's like two banks of lights in this stupid thing. So there's two switches for that. And then they also had the top of these wall receptacles set up on a, uh, a light switch as well. And it's a three-way switch. There's a switch up there and here, so you have to like snip the conductor on the side of the receptacle. You can stick it in there. But I found that this wouldn't program until I put the uh, night lights into the uh, s socket. Otherwise, it just was not happy at all. And then this one just turns all three of them off together, like I was trying to demonstrate downstairs. And then when you're in bed, I've got one of these pedestals located here so you can turn it off. And then uh, we'll run over to the master bath here before it's too late. So I kind of learned about the uh, Lutron in this room here. So this is like the, uh, the master bath, it's like the more modern part of the house. And they had modern switches in here. And I kind of liked how you could turn the lights on and off in a group and they kind of dimmed as they came off. So I started looking at this, and then I realized when you want to do a three-way of these, it's the same price as the Casetas. So I'm like, all right, let's get the wireless Casetas. It's the same price, and it's got more function. And then we've got some like sconces over here. It does that. Then for the uh, bathroom fan, this one's humidity sensing. It'll just turn on when you need it to turn on. And then it's got a, a timer as well. No occupancy in this room. 
Lastly, the uh, room here has an occupancy dimmer. And uh, I put in two of those LED panels to replace two LED fixtures that were just horribly blinding. They were 5,000K lights and uh, not too enjoyable. So you can see we're still trying to move in here and get organized. We gotta rip everything off the wall and paint this room. And uh, I guess that's it. We'll take a look at the view. See if my trespassers have been arrested yet. No, just kidding. It just gets kind of funny because they have like much more property than we do and they're always on our yard. But I'm just being petty at this point. But anyway, so uh, hopefully you found the uh, video interesting and somewhat useful. And uh, thank you for watching.